Hi everyone. This video has been requested to be made for somebody. It's how to crop and size your image for print. Now this will change depending on where you get your prints done but the principle is still around the same and this is mainly aimed at you Rob so good luck. So let's say we've got this image here this is my daughter by the way, I took it yesterday, uh, late afternoon. As you can see it wasn't very warm outside, in fact it was quite cold. But anyway, I captured this nice moment. So let's say that I was going to print this image. Now, first thing I'd like to mention, I don't know if it's going to show on the video, but you can see her face looks a shade bright. Now, that's me. I always send my prints off where they look a shade too bright. It's only a shade, I mean my monitor's calibrated and my prints are perfect. It's only a shade, I know it'll come back a shade darker than that and it'll look absolutely banging on picture. And as you can see I used a bit of fill flash on this, only a very bit. It was a backlit situation for the, the amount of light that was there. I got an exposure in manual and then I just put my flash in manual as well for the first time yesterday. I didn't use ETTL, I put it in manual and I think it was on a 16th power and I just sat there and I just click, 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 click and every one of my exposures was spot on. It was quite cold. Um, but anyway, on to the video. Let's say we've edited this image and now we're ready to print it. Now, especially for you Rob, I don't know, you've said you haven't got a colour profile for your lab. So if you're editing in Adobe RGB, I don't know, you need to actually convert your image. So first things first, you've got to edit, convert, and yours wants to be in the sRGB. This is in the sRGB, um, because I do a lot of printing, and the, the work in the sRGB colour space. So if you're, not in the, if you're in the Adobe, convert it to sRGB, I would anyway, unless you've got a colour profile. Right. So let's say I've edited it, I'm happy with the colour, I'm happy with the picture, I'm now ready to print it. And I want to print an A4, a 12B8. As you can see, that is the, the that is um, like a 12B8. Anyway, so if I press the C key, type in 12 space IN, which is 12 inch, I, uh, height AIN, this can be anything, 12 bit 20, 12 bit whatever, whatever your lab does. Now, you were saying yesterday most people's printers print at 300 dpi. Now, the one where I, I use Pro Am Imaging, I live in the UK and I use Pro Am Imaging, which by the way, I'll say it again, the best print shop I've ever used, and I've used Loxley, I've used them all. Pro Am is by far the cheapest and by far the best quality and they give you a colour profile as well which I'm going to show you in a minute. So mine wouldn't be 300 like, like most people's, it's actually 402. Now the printer they're using actually is only 400 but they tell you to put an extra 2 ppi on so that your image comes off the edge of the paper because they reckon every now and then it prints a shade smaller. Now I'm not saying that you don't do that, you just do your 300 or whatever your lab tells you to do. So I've put in my width 12, I've put in my height 8 and I've put in my resolution. So now I can crop the image. And as you can see, that's actually going to let me have a full image. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to crop it down a bit. Not too much because I want to leave a bit of headroom. We've got something like that. And we'll have a go at that bang, right, okay. So now we've cropped the image. Now there's one other thing to do before I actually convert it to the profile for print. If you've watched my video on sharpening images and how to set up your screen, I'm now going to view print size. You need to watch that video by the way which I will link from this one once I put it on YouTube. And So now if I go, can you see how it's gone from say 25 to 24.4. Now I'm going to get really close up so you're not going to see me on my webcam. And now it's softened off. Let me go back to 25. Yep, it's sharp there and it's soft when I go to view print size, which is what I've been telling you about before. So now I'm going to go to filter sharpen, unsharp mask, and I'm going to sharpen this up good. Now I'll put it at 1.5 pixels. Let's try 100. Off, on, off, on. Have a nice close look. 
bang, bang it down about, I think that'll be good, see if I look at it here it looks way too much there, you've got to look at the picture on the screen, I don't know if you are seeing that, but there you go, that's now the output sharpening done, because I've measured my screen and put the number in, if you haven't watched the video, watch it again, when this comes back now it'll be gorgeously sharp, it'll look fantastic, anyway, Rob, I think if that were you and most of you guys, you're actually done. If you if you ain't got a printer profile, you're done. You can save that out now, in and you've saved it out in the sRGB colour space. You've sharpened it if you've watched my video um, on sharpening, and you're ready to go. But me, I have a I have a colour profile. So if I I've got now got to go edit, convert to profile, and I've got to find Fuji Pro ICM. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to show you. Have we had any shifts? Oh, we have a little bit on the red. Look at the red jacket. On, off, on, which I aren't really bothered about. Now, you have got two rendering intents. You've got relative colour metric and perceptual. You'll see a colour change now. Can you see now? So that's my sRGB, and that's how it's going to come back from lab. It's changed the skin tones as well. So one of the best ones to use, really, is relative colour metric. But you can use perceptual in if you get a colour shift you can go try perceptual. And that's it for me. I go okay. Now my image is ready for lab. I can just save that out as well I, I save them in folders 12b8, 12b16, 12b18, 86, whatever. That image is now been cropped, it's been sharpened, and it's been converted to the colour space. Now, if I actually look at that image in Windows, or if I were looking at it in my picture viewer now, watch what it does, see it? Look at that. That's actually just a proof of what it would look like if you open it up. Especially mine. Because when I first started going to lab, when I converted to this profile, I looked at them in Windows and they looked like this. And I went, oh no, they're oversaturated. And I desaturated the red and the green. And when they come back, they were all really bland. But anyway, that, that doesn't apply to you unless you get a printer profile. Um, obviously, I've got one. Pro-Am Imaging in Bradford. I, I assume anywhere, in the, anybody in the UK watching the video can actually use Pro-Am Imaging and just get them posted. They do an FTP, so you could ring them up, set your FTP up, drag and drop your folders. You've got to size them and do what I just did there. They don't do any of that. You've got to do it all and put them in specific folders and you can choose matte paper or gloss like this. I always do coloured images in matte. So I put this down as a in a folder called 12b8 matte. And then and I'd put it in. And if I only five copies, I'd just save it five times as five different numbers. Um, it's, it makes it easier for pro so they don't get confused. They'll get it print it and usually it comes within the next day and honestly what you're seeing now on my screen and what comes back from print it come back a shade the the colours are a touch punchier but it's near as god I mean, it's 90% do you know what I mean um, and there you go hope this video helps for you Rob and anybody else watching it don't forget to use this method and stuff like that you need to set your monitor up for sharpening so that you can view print size when you've cropped and you can add a bit of sharpening to your image without guessing. Thank you.